And everybody said, Great, good, glorious morning, everybody in Jesus' name. It's wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord, and we thank the Lord for what He's been doing since we came. And this morning, a divine touch. I said a divine touch. And the Lord will touch your life and touch your soul and touch your spirit and touch every part of you. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. At this time, we bless your name. How wonderful you are. How glorious you are. How great you are. We thank you because of your great compassion. We thank you because of your great love. We thank you because of your great mercy. And we thank you because of the miracle power that you have deposited in our midst. So, Lord, we pray that this power will never fail in Jesus' name. We're asking, oh, Lord, that this morning a divine touch for everyone. A supernatural touch for everyone. Lord, that the hand of God from heaven will come down and touch everyone miraculously in Jesus' name. That, Lord, you turn every life around once again in Jesus' name. We remember we're complete in Christ and we pray, Lord, everything that will make for our fullness and for, and for our fruitfulness as well as our completeness, you grant to everyone this morning in Jesus' name. You'll not pass us by. Your power will not pass us by. And your miracle will not pass us by. Everything you have ordained for everyone to have to receive and to possess, we are going to have, we are going to receive and possess in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32, I'm reading from verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. He touched the hollow of his thigh. This heavenly guest, this heavenly wrestler, this heavenly ambassador, came to Jacob. Jacob had some real challenges in his life. It wasn't a temporary challenge. It was a challenge that had been there for many, many years. He thought time will really erase everything. He thought that time will kill the problem. He thought with, time, with the passage of time, all these things will be over. But 14 years passed and 20 years passed and the problem was still there. In fact, it appeared that the problem had increased because Esau was coming now with 400 other men, valiant men, conquering men, militant men, and they were ready to take on Jacob and all his family. It was at that time he then waited upon the Lord in that night. And they heavenly guest, heavenly ambassador, saying to bring the miracle that he needed, had to touch him. I'm talking to you this morning on the unforgettable touch. The unforgettable touch. I'm sure that many people had touched Jacob before this time. His wife had touched him. Maybe his children also touched him. And other people touched him. But this one, this one, this particular day, it was the unforgettable touch. And today, although many people have touched you in the past, and even the divine hand of God has touched you in the past, but this morning, another I said this morning, another touch. And there's going to be a divine touch in your life in Jesus' name. This is a kind of touch that Jacob never forgot. And the family of Jacob never forgot. And all the people that knew Jacob, they never forgot. It was an unforgettable touch. It tells us, and the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint. As he wrestled with him, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let you go except thou bless me. That blessing is coming your way today. I mean, a blessing you will never forget. A blessing that will just circulate your life, saturate your life, and you will never be the same in Jesus' name. Let me go, he said. Let me go because the day breaketh. He said, I'm asking for something. 
I came here for something. We've been wrestling all the night for something. We've been on this for how many hours now? I must get something. And I speak for you, you will get something. I said you will get something. You will not leave here empty-handed in Jesus' name. Every, every cell in your body will feel the miracle touch of the Lord, even today in Jesus' name. And then he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, My name is Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, think about this now. He, he didn't, he, even he got more than what he expected. All he wanted was victory over Esau. All he wanted was the middle wall of partition between Jacob and Esau to be broken down. All he wanted is so that Esau will leave him alone and will not touch him and will not destroy him. But now the Lord changed his name. I'm saying that the unforgettable touch this morning will bring a transformation in your nature in Jesus' name. What you were, everything will turn around. What he used to be, everything will turn around. And he said, your name is no more Jacob now, but your name is Israel as a prince. You have become a prince. You're not just an ordinary person now. You are now a prince, and that princely royal title will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And then he says, and thou hast power with God. Thou hast power with God and with men and has prevailed. It's telling us that because of that divine touch and because of that unforgettable touch, you're going to have such prevailing power, such authoritative power. And this power will be with men and will be with God and you will never fail again in Jesus' name. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore, wherefore, I beseech that thou dost ask after my name. And he blessed him there. And he blessed him there. The place where you have that divine touch is the place of blessing. And he blessed him there. And he's going to bless you here. I said he's going to bless you here. We're looking at Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, the unforgettable touch, the unforgettable touch, Mark chapter 5, and I'm reading over here from verse 25, Mark chapter 5, verse 25, and a certain woman, the one we read about before, that one was a man, and this one, a woman, I'm saying that a man can touch the Lord this morning, and a woman can touch the Lord this morning, and that touch will turn your life around. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years and had suffered many things of many physicians. And yet it says and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. Can you think about this? This has been going on now for twelve years issue of blood. And she spent everything she had and all the medication she had from all those physicians. Nothing got better at all but was getting worse. And then she, but when she heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. Again, the unforgettable touch. It's a touch that even Jesus Christ recognized that virtue is gone out of me. It's a kind of touch that brings virtue out of the life of Jesus and out of the reservoir of the power of the Lord Jesus into your life. And that is coming upon you this morning in Jesus' name. Peter didn't understand. The apostles did suffer didn't understand. Everybody is touching you. He said, no, there's a special touch. No, there's a significant touch. No, there's a spectacular touch. No, there's a supernatural touch. And the kind of touch we're talking about today is not an ordinary touch. It's going to be extraordinary in Jesus' name. Verse 29, and straightway, that means immediately, instantly, the fountain of her blood was dried up. That thing will dry up. I said that thing will dry up. That impossibility will dry up. And that mountain will dry up in Jesus' name. And she felt in her body. She felt in her body. When this touch comes upon you, you'll feel it in your body. You'll feel it in your soul. You'll feel it in your brain. You'll feel it in your mind. You'll feel it in your life and family. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched me? Who touched my clothes? 
and his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and, and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, Thy faith has made thee whole. It's a touch of faith. I said it's a touch of faith. And that faith will make you whole in Jesus' name. Go in peace, go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. The unforgettable touch. Three points we're going to consider. Number one, the touch of special miracles. The touch of special miracles. Number two, transformation through spectacular miracles. Transformation through spectacular miracles. Number three, translation by a supernatural miracle. Translation by a supernatural miracle. Number one, the touch of special miracles. As you look at people in the Bible, in the Word of God, you see that this divine touch was not just for Jacob alone. Other people have had the divine touch as well. And then there was a great change, a mighty change in their lives because of that special touch. Special touch that brought a special miracle in their lives. In First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 5. And I see lay and slept. It's talking about Elijah. He was discouraged. He was despondent. It was like it was disheartened. It's like everything had fallen apart. Chapter 18 was a time of great miracle, a time of great breakthrough. But now discouragement came because Jezebel sent unto Elijah. He said, Elijah, I'm serving you notice. By this time tomorrow, I'm going to handle you and deal with you like you dealt with all those prophets of Baal. And I'm going to cut off your head. I'm going to destroy you. And Elijah knew that that Jezebel was mightier and more powerful than even Ahab the husband. And because of that, he feared for his life. And then he went away. And when you are afraid, what you need is a divine touch. And that touch is coming upon your life this morning in Jesus name he even prayed a negative prayer he prayed a suicide prayer he prayed if I said terminate my life kill me and t get me out of this place because I am not better than any of my fathers and then God sent the divine guest and divine heavy uh, the, this angelic visitor and then said go and touch him and it is that touch it is that touch that makes all the difference in your life that's why I'm saying as we're praying this morning you'll feel that hand touching you and you'll see that heavenly angel touching you and when that touch comes upon your life you'll not be the same anymore in your life in jesus name and he lay and slept under a juniper tree and behold then an angel touched him and said unto him arise and eat arise and eat an angel came from heaven and touched him look at verse look at verse 6 it says and he looked and behold there was a cake baking on the coals and the cruise of water at his head who brought that an angel brought that an angel became his steward an angel became his cook an angel became the server that served him with the food and the water. And we're told then, he said in verse 6, And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him. I pray that touch will come upon you today. You see, in the, mid, in the point of discouragement, when you are about to give everything up, I don't think I can go on. I don't think I can take another step. I don't think I can pray another prayer. I don't think I can attend another service. I don't think I can preach another message. I don't think I can continue in ministry. A lot is around me. The pressure is too much and it is overwhelming. How can I continue? What you need is a torch and that torch is coming on today in Jesus' name. You see other people rejoice 
blessing. See other people celebrating. You see them running up and up. Praise the Lord. I got it. I saw that person walking. I saw that person got it. I saw this. And everybody's rejoicing. Then you fold your hand. You are there. You say, when are they going to finish? I just want to go home. I don't know whether I will come again. You will come again. I said you will come again because a torch is coming upon your life this morning in Jesus' name. All that discouragement, the torch will take it away. All that despondency, the torch will take it away. All that oppression and pressure in your life, the torch will take it away in Jesus' name. And the angel came the second time and touched him and then said, Arise. And it's because the journey is too great for the, the torch was to prepare him for the journey ahead. And this torch will prepare you for the journey ahead. I said to prepare you for the journey ahead. I'm looking now at 2 Kings chapter 13. 2 Kings chapter 13. And we're looking at verse 21. 2 Kings chapter 13. We're looking at verse 21. And it came to pass as they were burying a man. This one has even died now. It's not just that he was discouraged or despondent or in despair. This one has totally died. It says it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold despite a bunch of men. And they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bowls of, Eli of Elisha. Touched the bowls of Elisha. Touched the bowls of Elisha. What happened? He revived and stood up on his feet. Revival will come. Renewal will come. Restoration will come. All you need is that touch. Because as soon as this dead man was dropped there and then touched the bones of Elijah, life came again. Life will come again to you in Jesus' name. Anytime you feel that life is ebbing out, anytime you feel that life is going out, anytime you feel that enthusiasm and zeal and power and joy and excitement and the life that is worth living is getting out of you, go back to the altar. What you need is a torch and when that torch comes, you'll come alive once again in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10 the torch of special miracle. You're going to find out in Daniel chapter 10, reading there from verse 18. Daniel chapter 10, reading from verse 18. You will see how this torch we're talking about became unforgettable also in the life of this Daniel. Daniel chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 18, it says, Then there came again and touched me. There came again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. You know, as this time now, Daniel had been fasting for 21 days. And as he fasted, he became weak, and then the answer had not even come. And it was like, are we going to die here in Babylon, myself and my friends and my companions and all these people of Judah? Are we going to perish here in Babylon? And he fasted and he prayed, and the answer had not come. All of a sudden, an angel came again from heaven. You see, every time you are at that point when you are about to give up, every time you are at that point when it appears, Everything is about to be finished. The Lord will send that in jelly visitation. A divine touch will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And then he says, He strengthened me and then said, O grow man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened. And as you are hearing the word of the Lord today, you will be strengthened in Jesus' name. And said, let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. It is that divine touch. It is that divine touch that we need. And once that touch is there, you'll feel the power in your soul. You'll feel the power in your spirit. You'll feel the power in your body. And every part of your spirit, soul, and body will be strengthened. I, I transfer and I send that strength of the Lord in your soul right now in Jesus' name. 
Hey, look at this. This is Matthew. Now, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. It is the touch of special miracles. All these people that were touched by the Lord, can you see? They received a miracle. They received something spectacular. They received something extraordinary. Because of that divine touch, it's telling us now in uh, Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Uh, can you see all that we are reading for Elijah and then we have read also for uh, Elisha and then we have read also for Daniel. You know, those who are internal miracles, they were strengthened in their soul, they were strengthened in their spirit, they were strengthened in their mind, they were strengthened in the inner man. Here now we have something on the body. And this man was a leper. And he says, if thou wilt, thou canst, thou canst make me whole. And Jesus put forth his hand. And what happened? I said, Jesus put forth his hand. And then what happened? And touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. All your skin disease will be cleansed away today in Jesus' name. Because immediately he was cleansed by that divine touch. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 28. Matthew chapter 9. Reading from verse 28. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came unto him. And Jesus says unto them, Believe ye that I'm able to do this. The question is coming to you right now. Do you believe that God is able to do this in your life? Is he able to remove this mountain in your life? Is he able to take away this sickness from your body? Believest thou? Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes, saying, And he touched their eyes, saying, A touch is coming upon your eyes. A touch is coming upon your ears. A touch is coming upon your body. A touch is coming in your, to your personality. And once that touch comes, everything will change your life in Jesus' name. Saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And their eyes were opened. And your eyes are opened. And your body is healed. And the mountain is taken away. Because there is the touch of a special miracle. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 32. Mark chapter 7. We're looking at verse 32. Mark chapter 7. Verse 32. Here it says, And, and, and they bring unto him one that was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put a sand upon, upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears and spit and touched his tongue and touched his tongue and touched his tongue. The dead will receive their miracle today. And the dumb will receive their miracle today because he touched his tongue and looking up to heaven, he sighed and says unto him, Ephesus which that is, be opened, and straightway his ears were opened. Immediately his ears were opened, and then the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. Point number two, transformation through spectacular miracles. When these miracles come, so, come upon us, it's going to bring a spectacular miracle. A spectacular miracle. You will see it in Jesus' name. Forget the days of the past. Why this? Why that? Why not this? Why not that? All those of, that's of the past. This is a new day. I said it's a new day. It's a day of transformation. It's a day of miracle power. It's a day when impossibilities are becoming possible. And thank God you are living this day. And you are going to have your own share in Jesus' name. John chapter 9, John chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 1, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man sinned nor his parents. 
but that the works of God shall be made manifest in him. Maybe some things happen to you. And you are saying, what have I done? Did I sin? Or is it my family that sinned? Or is it my parents that sinned? But the Lord is saying, God is going to heal you. Because it is so that the work of God, the works of God, will be manifest in your life and in your family. That's why he has permitted that sin. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. Look at verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I am the light to the blind. I am the light of the ignorant. I am the light of those who are sitting in the corridors of darkness. And then it says in verse 6, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind, of the blind man with clay. And then it goes on to say, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. He went his way and washed and came seen. He went his way and washed and came seen. The Lord had touched him. The Lord made clay and then touched his eyes and uh, kind of smeared that on his eyes. And eventually when he went to wash, it says everything became clear. Your life will become clear. I said your life will become clear. His neighbors therefore he must say it. And they which before had known him, had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? And some said, This is he. Others said, he is like him, but he said, I am he. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How? What thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus, and he is here this morning. I said, He is here this morning. A man that is called Jesus, a savior called Jesus, the king called Jesus. The Lord called Jesus, the healer called Jesus, the deliverer called Jesus, the redeemer that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received my sight. You receive it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 25, very significant. Verse 25, it says, And he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Whereas I was blind, now I see. Whereas I was blind, now I see. A transformation had taken place, and you can see. Whereas I was weak, now I am strong. You can see. Where, 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 whereas I was sick. But now I am well, whereas I was sinful. But now I am saved, whereas I was bound. But now I am free, whereas I was cowardly. But now I am courageous, whereas I was poor. But now I am rich, whereas I was timid. But now I am fearless. That torch will make you another man today will make you another woman today. He said, this is what I was, but he touched me. And because of that touch, everything has totally turned around in my life. And because of that touch upon your life today, everything will turn around in Jesus' name. There is transformation waiting for you because there's a special miracle when this divine touch comes upon your life. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, 1 Samuel chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 10, we're reading from verse 6. In verse 6, there is what it says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. I thought you'd say amen to that. And thou shalt prophesy with them. You'll stop your amen. And shall be turned into another man. And shall be turned to another. You see, when that touch comes upon your life, you'll be turned to another man, another woman in Jesus' name. You know, this is Saul. He never had the Spirit of God like this upon his life before. But he said, when that touch comes, heavenly touch, 
supernatural touch divine touch when it comes upon your life it says number one the spirit of the lord will come upon you have you been saved and sanctified and then you're saying i've been praying for the holy ghost baptism for a long time this morning is your time as we begin to pray the heavens heaven's hands will touch you and then the spirit of god will come upon you in jesus name and then thou shalt prophesy thou shalt testify thou shalt preach thou shalt proclaim thou shalt confess thou shalt declare the words of the lord the wonderful works of the lord and not only that and shall be turned into another man and shall be turned into another man and shall be turned into another man it will be so in jesus name by the way, what does that mean? Shall be turned into another man. You know, Saul was just Saul. Saul was just Saul. But there, there was another man called Samuel. And that man called Samuel at the vision of the Lord. And that man called Samuel at the gift of prophecy. That man Samuel had the Spirit of God upon him. And God was saying unto him, You'll be turned unto another man. You will not be like ordinary Saul anymore. It will look like your facial appearance be that of Saul and then the gift in your life will be that of Samuel and then the Lord is telling you you'll be turned to another man today I said you'll be turned to another man today your facial appearance will still be like your facial appearance but the power in you will be that of Elijah the anointing in you will be that of Elisha you'll, you'll, still, look, you'll still look like your normal self your facial appearance will still be the same it will be like that Saul is still Saul but then when that divine touch comes upon your life you'll just have the faith of Mary the virgin be it unto me as the Lord has said you'll have the faith of you have the faith of Elizabeth and the faith of the women great women of God that Jesus said woman great is your faith be it unto you according to your faith when that divine touch comes upon you today you'll be turned to another woman in jesus name uh, look at this in verse 9 in verse 9 it says and it was so that when he had turned his back to go from somewhere god gave him another heart god gave him another heart god gave him another what kind of heart is that another heart the heart of a warrior the heart of a conqueror and the heart of an overcomer you know he wasn't he, he said when samuel spoke to him he said how me i'm the least in my father's house and my father is not even recognized although i look tall but i don't have the tallness is not inside my heart it's only in my physique and then god said you are going to do what i'm telling you to do you are going to do what i'm commissioning you to do you are going to do something in this life in jesus name and then as they went it says and the lord gave him another heart the heart you need to be able to do and to be able to face everything the lord has called you to face that other heart is coming to you this morning in jesus name it's the transformation that comes as a result of the touch of the lord upon your life joshua chapter 14 joshua chapter 14 transformation 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 i rejoice with you today transformation is coming upon you in jesus name boy transformation girl transformation young man transformation young lady transformation brother sister transformation this morning in jesus name joshua 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 chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 6 it says then the children of judah came unto joshua in gilgal and caleb the son of jephonim Caleb, the son of Jephone, he said, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me, and thee, in Kadesh Barnea, forty years old was I, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought him word again, as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly follow the Lord my God. You'll wholly follow the Lord your God in Jesus' name. And then he says, And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon, to, whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance. That land shall be your inheritance. And thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord 
that my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. He'll keep you alive. As he said, these 40 and 5 years, when you had 40, it was 40 at that time, and 45 years passed now. How many, how many years now? 40 plus 45, tell me out loud. 85 years of age. You still have a long time to stay, to stay here before Jesus comes. I said, you still have a long time to stay before Jesus comes. If you are 14 now, if Jesus tarries, there's something, there's something awaiting you. A useful life, a profitable life, a dynamic life. It's not, you know, some people, they say they have long life, long and useless, young and long and, and worthless. We're talking about you have long years, active years in Jesus' name. Productive years in Jesus' name. And the Lord is going to fulfill it in your life like he did for, like he did for this man Caleb in Jesus' name. What a wonderful thing. When God gives you a long life and it is active. He gives you a long life and it is mighty. He gives you a long life and it is powerful. He gives you a long life and it is productive. And you are going to be productive in your life in Jesus' name. He says, now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 40 and 5 years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness and now Lo, I am this day first called as eighty and five years old, and as yet I am as strong this day as I was in that other day. Still as strong this day as I was that other day. I'm praying that your strength, your power, your energy will continue in Jesus' name. Verse 12, verse 12, age of 85 now. Age of 85 now. You know some people when they reach 70, they say, I'm retiring. I cannot do evangelism anymore. I cannot pray anymore. I can even to attend retreat. I cannot attend retreat anymore. I cannot hold any conference. I cannot do this or do that anymore. Everything will turn around today in Jesus' name. You know, they say, you know, if you're going to preach, it demands a standing, a standing kind of a skill. And, you know, I'm now 75, I'm 85 now. I cannot stand, you will stand. I said, you will stand. Because here we find Caleb, he said, look at this now in verse 12. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. You're going to have the mountain in Jesus' name. What a ministry you are going to have. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. We're talking about the transformation that comes with spectacular miracle as a result of the divine touch. Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 5. Then said, I woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean leaves, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves, for mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had, which he had taken from the tongues, were the tongues from the, of the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. This has touched thy lips. There's a miracle in your mouth. Because a divine touch will come upon your lips in Jesus' name. A divine touch upon your tongues. A divine touch upon your lips. And thine iniquity is taken away. All your iniquity will be forgotten, forgiven, and put in the depths of the sea in Jesus' name. And I seen purge. And I heard the voice of the Lord after the touch. I heard the voice of the Lord after that transforming touch. I heard the voice of the Lord after that supernatural, spectacular miracle. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, tell me out loud, Here am I, send me. The Lord will send you in Jesus' name. And when he sends you, you will succeed. This work of the Lord will prosper in your hand. Souls will be turned to the Lord through you. And souls will be converted in their multitudes through you in Jesus' name. That torch is waiting for you here this morning. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 1, we're looking at verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. 
the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. It will come on you. I said it will come on you. It will touch your mouth in Jesus' name. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I have put my words in thy mouth. You receive that? I said you receive that? I said you receive that? The word of power in your mouth, you receive that? The word of authority in your mouth, you receive that? The word of a divine decree in your mouth, you receive that? It is so in Jesus' name. See, verse 10, I have this, this set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. It will happen in Jesus' name. Now we come to number three, translation by a supernatural miracle. Translation by a supernatural miracle. Well, when we talk of translation, we're talking mainly there is a final translation. That one is the rapture. But you know, many people do not understand. Even at this time now, there is a translation that is taking place. When the torch of the Lord comes upon you, you cannot be in the same place you were before. You cannot be in the same stage you were before. You cannot be in the same situation you were before. You cannot be in the same circumstance you were before. You are transported. You are translated and you are taken to another level. You are coming to another level today in Jesus' name. You know the people, the people of God in the Old Testament, they understood that they knew that they knew it will happen. They knew it can happen. Look at First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. And here we're looking at verse 7. First Kings chapter 18, we're looking at verse 7. You see, there's a final translation. Even as you look at the life of Elijah, there was a final translation for him not to see death. But now we're talking about a kind of translation that takes place right now. Before the translation that will take place at the time of the rapture. Look at this. The Lord will take you away from evil. You know, something is going to happen there and the Lord will just transport you out of it. He'll just tell you in your mind, don't stay here, go there now. But why? Don't ask any question. Go there now. And then you go over there after you have left, something will happen over there. So praise the Lord. The Lord translated me out of that place before calamity fell from today. Anytime calamity is going to fall, God will translate you out of that place immediately. Anytime disaster is going to come, something will just take you out of you. You'll not know why. You'll be translated out of the place in Jesus' name. Anytime an accident is to take place, you know, you know, some people, eh, they, they, they quarrel, they say, you know, you're always late, you're always late. And then eventually, you know, maybe you are to catch a particular bus or particular train, and then the Lord delayed you and, because that is translation. And then the bus went, and then you go to the bus stop. Where is the bus? Now look at my look at my situation, and then you hear that something. You say, "Praise the Lord! I was not in that bus. Praise the Lord! I escaped that thing." That's the translation I'm talking about. It'll translate you away from evil in Jesus' name, and the power of the Lord will take you away from anything that is evil, anything coming your way in Jesus' name. Translation, translation by a supernatural miracle. Let's look at this in First Kings chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 7. And as Obed was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face and said, Are thou that my Lord Elijah? And he said unto him, he answered him, I am. Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I seen? What have I done? That thou wouldest de deliver my, thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me. As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord, that is Ahab, has not said to seek thee. And when they said he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and the nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. Look at this now, look at this now. And it shall come to pass 
and it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from thee, the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. They knew, they knew that Elijah will always escape danger. And they know that you will always escape danger. As soon as I'm gone, the Spirit of the Lord will carry you out of the place. And Ahab, and he cannot find thee. If I go to tell Ahab, and then eventually will not find you because the Spirit of the Lord will take you away. It will happen in Jesus' name. We're going to look at Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8 and verse 39. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 39. It will translate you out of evil, translate you out of danger, translate you out of the power of darkness, and your life will be safe and your life will be secured in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 verse 39 And when and when they were come up out of the water The Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip That's what I'm saying That's what I'm, It was a desert place And because it was a desert And the eunuch of Ethiopia was going in another direction And there was no car, there was no taxi, there was no train He would have to walk back now a long journey And go to Samaria or any other place But the Spirit of the Lord translated him and caught him away that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing but Philip was found in Azotus. Translation has taken place that is coming your way. I said that is coming your way. In fact it tells us in Colossians chapter 1 Colossians chapter 1 and I'm reading here from verse 12 it says giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet suitable and fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in I in light who has delivered us from the power of darkness who has delivered us from the power of darkness who has delivered us from the power of darkness has he delivered you who has delivered us from the power of darkness i said has he delivered you who has delivered us from the power of darkness has he delivered you you know, I wonder, some people, they attend, you know, this um, conference of miracle touch, the touch of special miracle, and the Lord has delivered them already, and then they hear that something is going on, maybe tonight or somewhere, and they write deliverance, and then they go there again, and I'm saying, what's the problem? Have you eaten? Yes, I'm eating, and then, are you full? Yes, I am full, and then they see a kind of uh, ramshackle kind of uh, book or whatever it is, and then they turn it there. I say, what are you going to do again? I want to see whether I can have something to eat over here. Are you full already? Yes, I am. Have you eaten already? Yes, I am. This is gluttony. The spiritual gluttony. You are delivered already. I said you are delivered already. Anywhere you find some people, they are still looking for deliverance to say, oh, they missed the one I got. And because I've got my own, I'm not running up and down or and north and south. Elders get looking for another thing because I have got it. I said I have got it. That's why it says, who has delivered you from the power of darkness. And the power of darkness will never have any authority over you anymore in Jesus' name. And he has translated us, and he has translated us, and he has translated us, praise the Lord, and he has translated me, praise the Lord, and he has translated me, praise the Lord, and he has translated who? He has translated who? Has translated who? Out of the kingdom of darkness unto the kingdom of his dear son. You are there already in Jesus' name. The final translation will take place, but now there is an immediate translation right now because of that divine touch. It will take you out of poverty, translate you into prosperity. It will take you out of weakness, translate you into strength. It will take you out of darkness, translate you into the light. It will take you out, it translates you out of the midst of the enemies, and it will translate you in the love of God in Jesus' name. It will translate you out of any power, any power that can destroy your life. It translates you into the power of the living God in Jesus' name. Around you, there's a wall of fire. Around you, there is a wall of fire. 
underneath you are the everlasting arms. Above you there is an umbrella of the protection of the Lord. Inside you there is the Holy Ghost there. Because now you are no more in the kingdom of darkness. You are no more in the mummy water spirit. You are no more in all those other places. I am translated. I am translated. I feel it in my soul. I feel it in my body. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my brain. I feel it all over me. I am translated. Where are you? I am translated. I said, where are you? I am translated. There's no fear again. There's no cowardice again. And there's no sickness again. And there's no mountain anymore. And there's no fear anymore. And there's no discouragement anymore. There's a divine touch right now. There's a divine touch right now. There's a divine touch right now. There's a divine touch. He has translated you. He has trans don't look back. Don't look back. Don't keep on going forward. Up, 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 up all the time. Because there is a translation that has taken place. You tell the Lord right now. Tell the Lord right now. There is a translation because of that divine touch. A special miracle. A divine miracle. A supernatural miracle. A spectacular miracle translated, transformed. Because of that divine touch, just praise the Lord, just praise the Lord. The past is gone, the old is gone. There is something new and it's coming upon your life. It's there already. It's there already. It's there already. Miracle, change, transformation. Once you were blind, but now you can see. Once you were weak, but now you are strong. Once you were poor, but now you are rich. Once you were doubting, unbelieving, but now you have strong faith in the Lord. It's there. It's there. You'll never be the same. There's a touch of the hand of the Lord coming upon you right now. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I receive. Lord, I accept. You are turned into another man. You are turned into another woman. You are not what you used to be. You are not how you used to be. Another man. Another woman. It has happened. It has happened. Praise the Lord for this glorious transformation. Praise the Lord for this glorious transportation. Praise the Lord for this glorious translation. It has happened already. Accept that. Accept that. Accept that. Believe that. Receive that. It'll take you away from danger. It'll take you away from disaster. It'll take you away from evil. From now on, any time evil is about to take place, it will translate you out of that place. Transport you out of that place. Catch you out of that place. In Jesus' name we pray. Victorious people of God, delivered people of God, blessed people of God, in Jesus' name we pray. No fear in your life anymore. No calamity in your life anymore. No danger in your life anymore. You'll not be vulnerable again. That is, the door will never be open to any enemy to destroy your life anymore. Praise the Lord, you are free. 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 Amen. The anointing of last night, has it dried up from your hands? Let, let me see that. Let me see that hand again. Praise the Lord. Anointing. 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 Praise the Lord. You know, the devil is saying that even your clapping has totally changed. Your clapping has totally changed. Your clapping has been transformed. And now, even your clapping alone can drive away the devil. The clapping of anointed hands, anointed hands, anointed hands. It is so in Jesus' name. 
you know, I'm going to tell you something now. You, you, you sometimes you laugh and say, Pastor, Pastor, how can you say that? What I'm saying is, when you get back home, anytime the devil just comes and touches anybody, instead of even, instead of praying and hollering and shouting, just begin to clap and just clap and just clap and just clap. And the devil will run away in Jesus' name. You know, if the devil comes and is trying to do this, uh, you just clap and just clap and all the devil is gone in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I'm going to pray right there. Is the anointing still there? Where are the anointed hands? Father, in the name of Jesus. I will thank you for the joy of the Lord, which is the strength of everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you have told us the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. And Lord, I pray, everyone here, the least of us, and the rest of us, and the high and the low, and everyone, I pray that this anointing that breaks the yoke will be mighty in every life, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, every brother here, every sister here, every boy here, every girl, everyone, oh Lord, no stain of sin. And no stain of sickness. And all the powers of darkness, they are destroyed in Jesus' name. Lord, as your people march out today, when we finish, a mighty army. A mighty army. A transformed army. A translated army. Oh Lord, I pray, their language will bring power. Even their look will bring power. Even their comportment will bring power. Even their walking will bring power. And Lord, when they put those hands together and they clap, heaven will rejoice in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I just pray, anywhere, Satan will not stand before you. Demons will not stand before you. Sickness will not stand before you. Brain problem will not stand before you. Joblessness will not stand before you. Barrenness will not stand before you. You now have the strength of the Lord. The Lord has taught you. Go in this your strength. 40 days, 40 weeks, 40 months, 40 years and beyond. Go in the strength of the Lord in Jesus' name. You will climb every mountain. You will cross every ocean. You will cross every territory. And everywhere you go, you will do exploits. Everywhere you go, you will do exploits. The supernatural power of the Lord is upon your life right now. That divine touch is upon your life right now. No fear in your life anymore. No discouragement in your life anymore. No defeat in your life anymore. And there is no poverty in your life anymore. There is no failure in your life anymore. No defeat in your life anymore. Victory and triumph. Success and power. Authority and anointing. And as you go, everything you touch will turn to blessing in Jesus' name. Go back and succeed. Go back and succeed. And go back and excel in Jesus' name. And this anointing upon your life today will never dry up in Jesus' name. And the work of the Lord will prosper in your hands. You are the believers, the people of God, as you are going, this sign shall follow you because you believe. In the name of the Lord, you will cast out devils. If you drink a deadly thing, it will not hurt you. You will speak a new language. When you lay your hands on the sick, they shall recover. You will pick up serpents and throw them away. And the power in you will never fail in Jesus' name. From today, you are another man. From today, you are another woman. What you are not able to do before, you are going to be able to do. Oh Lord, I pray, confirm your blessing upon every child of God, everyone here, in Jesus' name. You are blessed and you are a channel of blessing to everybody. Lord, we thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.